So in this little video, we're going to go over the relationship between equilibrium and our Gibbs free energy. And to start, um, we're going to start off and just remind ourselves so we can recall when a reaction is spontaneous. We say a reaction is spontaneous when delta G is less than zero or negative. And that's our sort of indicator of whether a reaction will occur. Um, we've started to talk about reversible reactions, and so we can start to make some connections. Um, and so when we think about this, if we think about a reversible reaction, so for a reversible reaction, all right, when delta G is negative, um, then we say the reaction is spontaneous left to right. So as written, that reaction would be a spontaneous reaction. If, however, we have a delta G that's greater than zero, we would say that's a non-spontaneous reaction, but the other way of looking at it is the reverse reaction is actually the spontaneous reaction. So in other words, going from right to left becomes the spontaneous version of the reaction. And we have another set of conditions where we talked about, we said at equilibrium itself, if we have an established equilibrium, then what we said is the forward and reverse reactions rates are equal. And so delta G in this case is equal to zero. So we can sort of summarize that. And if we think about this for some generic reaction that's reversible, A goes to B, we could write if delta G is negative, then the reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction. If delta G is greater than zero, then we're spontaneous in the reverse direction. And if delta G equals zero, then we are at equilibrium and there'll be no net movement of our reaction overall. So we could summarize our first few points as shown here. Now, we can now, thinking about this, if we bring in our idea of the reaction quotient. So remember our reaction quotient Q This is a way to assess the status of a reversible reaction. What we mean by that is we were comparing Q and K, and that'll help us tell which direction the reaction is going. So we, by comparing Q and K. And we can make a similar box to what we made before and say, if Q is less than K, oops, K, then we know the reaction goes to the right, All right? So if Q is less than K, we're gonna end up forming more products and so the reaction's going to the right. If Q is greater than K, then our reaction goes to the left, All right? We're gonna have to make K or make Q a smaller number. And so we need more reactants, less products. And finally, we said, if Q is equal to K, then we're at equilibrium and there's no movement no net movement that we can see. Now, 
think about what we just said here. In this first point, if Q is less than K, the reaction goes to the right. Well, that's delta G is less than zero. If Q is greater than K and the reaction goes to the left, that's delta G being greater than zero. And in our third case, at equilibrium, delta G is equal to zero. So what we're seeing here is we already have a relationship between Q, our reaction quotient, and our equilibrium constant, or in our um, Gibbs free energy. And so this equation that we're now going to show um, for the Gibbs free energy, we've essentially already been talking about without putting it in equation form. We can say delta G is equal to delta G naught. Sorry, so this is the Gibbs free energy. All right, so this is our Gibbs free energy. And this is Gibbs free energy at standard conditions. And what we're seeing is we're developing an equation that will allow us to compare delta G under any conditions to those of standard conditions. So it's delta G naught plus R T ln of Q. And in this expression, R is our gas constant. Now we have to watch out for units here because these gas constants will be 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin. T is temp in Kelvin. And then we have the natural log of our reaction quotient. So this equation will allow us to predict which way a direction reaction will move or what is the Gibbs free energy of a reaction. And we can see the Gibbs free energy is going to be affected by delta G under standard conditions plus the temperature of that reaction. And now we're seeing natural log of Q. And that's really what we were talked about here, right? We can see, we can predict the movement of a reaction based on Q and its relationship to K. And that's kind of what this is getting at here in our sort of Gibbs free energy. Now, we can take this one step further and we can say, let's look at what if we are at equilibrium? So what if we are at equilibrium? What do we know? So at equilibrium, we know Q is equal to K. And we know delta G is equal to zero. So if we take that reaction from above and substitute in, we now know zero equals delta G naught plus R T ln of now K. And now we can rearrange our equation. And I'm going to say delta G naught is equal to minus R T ln of K. And what we just did is we now have an expression that will relate our delta G naught to our equilibrium constant. So we now can relate K to delta G naught. And think about the power of this. We've already looked up how to find delta G naught through looking up in appendixes, products minus reactants, or finding delta H and delta S and plugging into delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And we can use that to calculate K, our equilibrium constant. Or if we determine the equilibrium constant of a reaction, we can now back calculate and figure out what is the delta G naught of that reaction. So in the next couple of videos, we'll look at a couple of problems um, using both of these two equations. Thank you.